Welcome back to Good With A Camera. I'm Alan and today we're going to be looking at the Metacon Speedmaster 25mm f0.95 from Zong Y Optics. So once the lens arrives, it comes in a sort of leather or vintage type box. Very nice, very well packaged. And the first thing you're going to notice is how small this lens is. It is absolutely tiny. And when we compare it to the Olympus 25mm, uh, lens it's pretty much the same in fact it's it's almost identical in size to the Olympus 4518 really impressive the the build quality is a, a solid a solid metal body very well made so the focus ring is nice and smooth and um, very easy to focus with the, the Olympus cameras I'm sure the Panasonic's as well with the focus aids that are available these days it's really easy to manually focus Nice smooth focus ring. The aperture ring is clickless. There's no option to make it clickable, it's clickless, which I guess is good for video. Um, it doesn't make a big difference to me in terms of the photography side of it. Um, you don't get the clicks, but you can easily see where it is. Generally, I just tend to leave it on f0.95. Uh, I mean, why else would you buy an f0.95 lens if not to shoot at f0.95? Um, and the temptation is to just basically shoot at that aperture all the time. So, the bit everyone's probably wondering is image quality. Well, <clears throat> if you like to look at resolution charts, if you're a pixel peeper like, like Mark is, and you like to look at every image 100%, corner to corner, looking for problems, purple fringing, chromatic aberration, um, you're probably not going to like this lens. To be fair, <laughs> um, Mark's not had a look at this lens yet, but I I'm sure he probably won't be that impressed with it. But if, like me, um, I've really come to like the look of an image, generally uh, I shoot an image and if I like what I see, as long as it's in focus and it's nice and crisp, I'm usually happy at that, depending on what it's for, obviously. Um, you probably wouldn't be using this for product shots <laughs> where you need everything to be razor sharp uh, across across the field you probably want to use the Panasonic or, or the Olympus versions of these lenses um, but for location shoots I mean documentary wedding um, anything that's requires low light or you're just chasing shallow depth field this lens is great it has a really good look about it. It has a sort of vignette. It's very soft at the edges and corners. Now, I don't have the Voigtlander to compare it to. I've been told the Voigtlander is also a little bit soft at the, at the edges and the corners. And um, as long as you know this and you frame your subject within the, the central circle to the image, then it shouldn't be a problem. The center circle to the image is actually very good. Uh, it produces nice crisp images. Uh, good sharp focus. When you go into 100%, yes, the, the fine details, the eyelashes, little crow's feet, they can be a little bit soft, but it is not bad at all. It is actually surprisingly good quality and perfectly acceptable for many applications. Like I said, docu documentary wedding stuff, uh, sort of fashion blogs. It really, it really does produce excellent images and it has a real look, a kind of a character, if you will, um, that I really like. It can flare. There is purple fringing in some of the shots, um, backlit, and there is a little bit of chromatic aberration, but these are things that can be dealt with um, within Lightroom. Um, quite often I don't actually quite like the lens to be not so perfect in all of this stuff. I often use VSCO filters, or Visco you may pronounce it, which are Lightroom presets, which simulate film types, old film types. Um, and these filters can add in grain, sometimes reduce the clarity a little, because they're after a look, much like the sort of Instagram filters that you might use on your phone. It sort of plays around with color cast, give it a, gives it a specific look. The VSCO presets are a bit like that. They almost reduce the quality slightly. And I've noticed that in a lot of the uh, high-end magazines, fashion magazines, this is like a running theme at the moment. You don't see many shoots which are blisteringly sharp and uh, razor quality. They, they all seem to have a lot of grain and a, a sort of reduced quality, a bit like an old photograph, that sort of nostalgic memorabilia kind of look to them. 
and that's what the, the VSEO filters do and I think that's the kind of look this lens gives you with its soft edges and it's it's not, not perfect but good sharp images in the middle. I absolutely love it. The bokeh on this lens, it's, it's a kind of a mixed bag. I've found images for a short really close in to a subject. The, the bokeh is nice and smooth, it's got a really nice fall off, I really like it. But when you get to a sort of mid-range where, where you're shooting sort of upper body or the quarter length uh, type portrait, the background can play a bit of a part. Um, sometimes it's smooth and in general I, I like the bokeh on this lens. But if you've got some high contrast situations, it can get a bit nervous. Um, there's a particular picture, uh, I'll put it in the video, of a, a Santa Claus. And the background contains a lot of high contrast and strange coloured elements. And the background can definitely get a bit busy. But for £260, $299, it's, it's hard to complain, <laughs> really. The, the, the lens is, is really a, a great piece of work. And the fact that it doesn't have bokeh as smooth as, say, the Noctocron or the Voigtlander 17.5, uh, for this price range, I, I, th I think it's hard to complain. Obviously, this guy is set up for video and, as far as I can see, is pretty good for video. It's got the clickless aperture. That shallow depth of field is just fantastic. And any kind of issues you may have with the resolution is unlikely to be seen in video, especially in HD video, I'm not sure about 4K, but for just 1080p HD, this lens is absolutely superb. So to finish up, I'm joined by fashion photographer Claire Coulter. Hello! Now, Claire would normally be working on full frame cameras, you, you still like the full frame quality and higher resolution images for your, for your high end work. But um, recently for family shoots and for location shoots, you've been using the Olympus. Yeah. Um, I helped out Claire with a shoot the other day and there really is a big difference. In the UK, we can shoot on the, the public streets without any problems. But if the weather's bad, you have to go in at a location. There's a lot of venues really don't really don't appreciate you with big SLRs and flash guns and they tend to to stop mm -hmm. but um, we were able to shoot what three different venues and yep. not one person stopped us in fact security guard actually smiled as they went by mm -hmm. just assuming um, it was just friends taking pictures I guess mm -hmm. um, but you gave this lens a try uh, on Olympus what was your thoughts? I thought it was similar to using the 50mm 1.8 or the 85 maybe on the uh, Canon 5D Mark II. I really enjoyed using it and actually using the manual focus was nowhere near as difficult as what I what I'd anticipated because I thought that um, I just assumed that since I'd always used autofocus that going, going to manual would be a, like, quite difficult but to be honest using the manual focus was actually quite fun and um, I was quite impressed with the depth of field that I got from it. Um, we were out in location natural light, so obviously that's the ideal time to be using using this lens. I don't know whether I would use it in a studio environment. Um, I could always give it a try, but manual focus, um, chasing after a toddler or something is maybe, maybe not such a good idea. Um, yeah, I, I think in the studio, it would, yeah. I think you would normally just use uh, like the Olympus or the Panasonic optics. You'd probably want to have the autofocus, you'd probably want to have the good optics. I think this is more of a location lens, mm -hmm. um, whether it's an emergency lens or whether you're just after that shallower depth of field that you normally wouldn't chase in the studio um, mm -hmm. anyway. Uh. But I think for me this is now one of my favourite little lenses, special on location and for my own social work. Um, I think this is unlikely to often leave my EM5 Mark II. But um, thank you to Claire for joining us today. Thank you for having me. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Good With A Camera.